Hello, hello. Testing one, two, three. Hoping you can hear me. Hoping you can see me. I'm checking it out on our Facebook page to make sure that we are indeed live. Well, let's see. Hmm. There we are. Right, let's see if we have sound. Let's see if we have sound. And we do. That's great. Awesome. Well, hello, good evening. Boy, my head is shiny, isn't it? Girl, put some more makeup on. <laughs> good good evening. Welcome, welcome. Hello, my name is Darlene Winans. I've seen you here many times before, and uh, I am on the board of International Women's Ministries. It's my honor and pleasure to serve as their chief financial officer. And uh, we just want to say thank you for all of those of you who prayed and supported our Giving Tuesday we had just a few weeks ago. We're so thankful for each and every one of you who invests in this ministry in whatever way you possibly can. And we're so thankful for you. Thank you for um, being faithful and for watching and for supporting us. And we're just um, so delighted that you've joined us here this evening. I hope you catch me here or on the replay. I know in December we get busy. We get busy. There's the shopping and the gifting and the wrapping and the cards and all of that. Um, but I hope that you can take a few minutes out of your busy schedule and um, sit here with me and hear the word of the Lord and pray with me. And that would be um, my biggest delight would be that you would join me either here or on the replay or repray, as some say. Um, what an amazing year we've had with IWM. We've talked about that before. Um, all the places that we've gone to, all the missionaries that we've blessed, um, whether um, in person on a missions trip or um, through financial donations that helped them in their time of need, in, sometimes in very emergency type situations, um, and supporting their ministry on a regular basis, all of that is done through IWM and through um, supporters and donors like you. So thank you for that. And what an amazing future lies ahead, Lord willing, in 2024. Um, we have planned um, trips to India and Kenya and Indonesia and Nicaragua and even two stateside trips in the U.S., um, all being planned three state side, I guess it is, um, all being planned for 2024. So we have um, a busy year ahead, but we want to go according to the plan that, that Christ has for us, according to his will and um, his plan and his timing. And um, I want to talk to you tonight um, as we share a little devotional together about that, about timing. Um, as you are, are aware, as you probably know, this is a season of Advent, the season of um, preparing and waiting for Christmas to come, that celebration of the day of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, a lot of times we um, listen to podcasts or read Advent style devotionals. And I've been reading one lately, and I want to share a little bit about that with you tonight, um, if I may. So um, Advent, if you've never heard of that word or practiced Advent during this Christmas season, um, the literal meaning of Advent is from Latin, and it means coming. And so in Advent, we're awaiting the coming of our Lord. And as you know, when Christ came as a child, as a baby, um, in Bethlehem so long ago, 
And at this time, we celebrate his birth. Um, that was his first coming. And uh, now we await his second coming, don't we? The second coming of the Lord. Uh, the dictionary um, defines Advent as the arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. I love that definition. The arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. Well, we're, ra we're waiting on the arrival of a notable person. That would be the personhood of Jesus Christ. And a notable event that uh, at Christmas time, of course, the event was his first coming. And now we wait on him to come for the second time, his second coming. So as believers, um, when we're celebrating um, Christmas time, we're waiting, we're preparing, we're getting ready to celebrate his birth. And um, in this devotional that I've been reading, um, I want to show you the book. I don't know if you can read it or not, but it's called Waiting Here for You. And the subtitle is An Advent Journey of Hope, and it's by Louis Giglio. I hope I pronounced that right. But in, in this book, and I've gone through, you know, the first week of December is the first week of Advent. And um, in this first week, he talks about uh, waiting. We hate to wait, don't we? Um, as children, we were told, well, you're going to have to wait. You can't have that cookie now. You have to wait till after your dinner. Or we're told you have to wait till Christmas or wait till your birthday to get to open your presents. And little kids don't like waiting, do they? But you know what? As adults, we don't like waiting either. We don't like getting stuck in traffic and having to wait. Um, we don't like waiting in the line at the grocery store or the bank. Um, we don't like waiting at the doctor's office, especially if the doctor gets behind schedule and you have to wait a long time. Um, you, you and I both know we don't like to wait. And what do we do in the waiting? We get impatient. We might get frustrated. We might get angry or some other emotion is displayed as we wait. And if it's something that we've been waiting for for a long time, we sometimes lose hope that that thing will never happen or that event will never come, that notable event that we're waiting on. So let's look at the history of Israel and how they had to wait on the Messiah's coming. You know, the prophecies of old in the Old Testament, starting from Moses down to the prophet Malachi, the promise of the Messiah is written in God's word that, that Christ would come. And yet, after Malachi, the prophet Malachi, um, in his book, he actually makes a prophecy about the coming Lord. And then there are 400 years of silence. No prophets, no word of the Lord. It is silent. God is not speaking to his people at that time for 400 years. Can you imagine generation after generation was born and heard the promises and heard the prophecies and they lived and they died not seeing the prophecies fulfilled for 400 years, silence, nothing from God. And you have to imagine, perhaps, um, perhaps some of them gave up hope. Some of the Israelites might have given up hope, waiting on God's promise that hadn't been fulfilled for 400 years, wondering why God hadn't sent another prophet to tell them and to encourage them and to give them further hope. But what they didn't see was that God was still at work. God was still preparing for his son to come, to give up his only son, his only begotten son, to have him come to earth, to take on the sin of the world, to, to die in the way that he died, crucified on a cross. 
He knew all of these things that were foretold would come true. And yet he's silent for 400 years. But God was working. God was making a way. He was preparing a way. He was setting things in motion that we knew nothing about. Think about that for a moment. God is moving even when we don't see it. God is moving in ways that we don't even know. In ways we haven't even thought of. God's still moving. God's still working. So I ask tonight, what is it that we're waiting for? What are you waiting for? Maybe it's a diagnosis. Maybe it's a healing. Maybe you're waiting to see if that treatment will work that the doctor has prescribed. Maybe you're waiting on a baby to be born. Or you're waiting on a loved one to be healed. Now I have to share with you um, personally and uh, spoiler alert, it might get emotional. <laughs> I'm going to share with you what I'm waiting on. I am waiting for the day of my children's salvation. I want to see my kids saved. I want to see the day that that happens. And that they return to their walk with the Lord. That they return to their first love. But maybe God is working in the silence. We haven't seen that promise, that miracle. Maybe a prophetic word was spoken over you or your children. And we haven't seen that come to fruition. But it doesn't mean that God is ignoring us. Or that God doesn't hear us when we pray. God is working. God is on the move. God offers us hope. He was preparing for the coming of his son during that 400 years of silence. And the promise came. God is preparing now for the second coming of his son. And the promise will come. And his word is true. His promises over us for our healing, for salvation, for our children, for our friends, our family, for the people that we pray for. We know that God hears our prayers and he answers our prayers. And his promises in his word are true. They're true for me. And they're true for you. Maybe God is silent, but he is not doing nothing. God is on the move and he's working it out. He's preparing and making a way for your miracle, for that thing that you've been waiting for. And in the season of Advent, as we wait in hope and expectation for the Christmas to come, to celebrate Christ's birth, to celebrate his second coming that will come, don't lose hope in this season of waiting. I want to emphasize tonight the importance of community, the importance of sharing your struggles with others, um, to not wait alone, but to find a friend or a family member who will agree with you in prayer. And if you're comfortable, you can post your request here in the comments and we can pray together for it. Or if you're watching the replay, um, we can see the comments later and agree to pray with you and agree with you in prayer. I'd like you to agree with me in prayer for the salvation of my children. And I'm going to say their names aloud that you will agree with me to pray for them. And their names are Robert and Corey 
and Patrick. And I ask that you pray for my children, for their salvation. My kids are grown. They're in their 30s. But God is good. He will provide a way and he will be good um, to deliver on his promise. Amen. Galatians 6, 2 says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We're to bear our burdens with each other and not go it alone. But um, share, share our struggles with, with a friend. Share your struggles with someone. Be thankful in the waiting. It's so hard. I know it's so hard waiting. We don't like it. <laughs> Sometimes the Lord is teaching us through the waiting. Sometimes he's teaching us through the struggle or the trial. He's teaching us patience, forbearance. He's teaching us and producing in us fruit. He's, he's with us in the waiting. And I love that. He never will leave us. He never forsakes us. He is always a constant friend and always with us. So I would like to pray tonight together. And if you'll join me in prayer, let's bow our heads together. Father God, we know that this is a season of waiting. And we rejoice that you came. We rejoice in your son, Jesus, who was born to us in Bethlehem so long ago that he came to earth knowing what lay ahead of him and yet he still gave his life for us and yet he still came and yet Lord you still gave your son what great love you have for us Lord we are so thankful you are a faithful and merciful God Lord, in the waiting, the waiting on your coming, the waiting on the miracle that we've been praying for, Lord, it is so hard sometimes. We ask for blessing and comfort and patience and peace in the waiting. Lord, will you help us to be those things? Help us to be, see the blessings that are coming in the waiting. Can you help us to see and feel your presence and your peace all around us as we wait on you. While we wait, we know that you are still at work, that you are still on the throne, that you are still working and preparing and making a way. Lord, we pray the promises over our situation. Just as the prophecies of old were fulfilled when Jesus came, we pray the promises in you, in your word, over our situation. Lord, for my children, I pray the promises in your word in Isaiah 54, 13, that says, all your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. I pray that promise for you, for, for each of the children. Lord, for Robert and Corey and Patrick, I pray that promise. Lord Jesus, you have promised your people that all your children shall be taught by the Lord. We ask you to please do this. Please reveal yourself to all my children. And for grandchildren that are to come and descendants that are far off, bring each one into peace and to right fellowship and relationship with you. Thank you for your promise in your word, Lord, in Isaiah 44 that says, you will pour out water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. You will pour out your spirit upon our offspring and his blessing to our descendants. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing to our descendants, that your spirit will be poured out on our offspring. Lord, that our children will see the day of their salvation. Lord, in Proverbs, your word says, the righteous who walks in integrity Blessed are the children after him. Lord, will you bless my children? Will you bless them? Will you cause them to walk in peace? Will you cause them to serve you the rest of their days? Lord, in Jeremiah, you say, 
I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for their own good and the good of their children after them. Thank you for your blessing, Lord, for our children. Lord, we declare these promises, and there's so many more, Lord, in your word. We declare this over our children, over each situation that is represented here tonight, for each one watching the replay, for each one bowing their head with me right now. The promises of the Lord are true. We may not see it in our lifetime, but God is still working to fulfill them. Lord, we may struggle in the waiting. Help us to wait without fear. Help us to wait with hope and with expectation. Help us to be still on the matter, knowing that you are true to your word and you will fulfill your promises. Help us to be still and know that you are God and that you are still working. Lord, I pray blessings over my friends who are watching and listening. Lord, would you provide a way? Would you keep working in their situation, in the miracle that they're waiting for, in hopeful expectation? Lord, just as we wait in hope for your coming and for your second coming, we wait in hope and expectation for the miracle to happen in each of our lives, Lord. We know that you hear us. We know that you hear from heaven. Lord, thank you that you hear and that you're still working and that your promises are true. Oh, we are so thankful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, would you bless our friends who are watching. May they have a blessed season as we celebrate your long-awaited coming, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for praying with me. And I want to wish you a blessed Christmas season. A blessed new year to come in 2024. And I just pray that um, you are encouraged by these words. I hope that you are awaiting with hopeful expectation as I am for the promises of God's word to be fulfilled and to come true. Know that God is working. Know that you are not alone, that you have a community here with IWM, that we can pray with you. And... Um, hopefully and expectantly wait on the Lord. God bless you all. Have a great evening.